Hello again and welcome. Well, uh, we're continuing in our look at Ephesians chapter 4 in our daily devotionals. Uh, as you recall, the second half of Paul's letter moves from the really the theological, we call the orthodoxy or the, the role of the, uh, of the Christian. And uh, we're moving into the practical application of if I am a true follower of Jesus Christ, how does that uh, work itself out in my day-to-day -day life? So we move from what we call orthodoxy to orthopraxy or practice. And uh, we've been looking at some specific things that, that Paul outlines, beginning with that if we're truly living up to the calling that God has, we're endeavoring to be to, to speak the truth and, and not live by lies of any kind. Uh, secondly, to control our passions, particularly the passion of anger, and to be forgiving people rather than people who are bitter and resentful. And then yesterday we talked about the idea of not stealing, and I particularly focused on how that when you have a job and you don't really do it faithfully, you're in, a, in effect uh, committing theft. You're taking wages that you're not earning. And how important it is for us to not only earn wages, but all to meet our personal needs, but also to have something that we can use to give to others, that we can use the resource we have to bless other people. And so um, there's a whole, you know, different sides to every one of these issues, and they can be very complicated. And I think that that's part of the challenge, that we just don't read these words, but we really give some thought of how does this apply to my life? In what ways could this speak, you know, really specifically maybe to an area where I've been falling down in the past. Well, as we continue on in verse 29, we hit an area that uh, I think is, um, well, let me just say, as we continue this week, it's gonna get harder and harder and harder for me uh, because it's really talking about areas where I know I struggle. But in verse 29, he says, uh, let no unwholesome words proceed from your mouth, but only such words as is good for edification. Edification means to, to build up somebody, to, to improve their, their condition, their situation, spiritually, mentally, and otherwise. Uh, but it's good for, a word is, as is good for edification, see, according to the need of the moment, so that it will give, give grace to those who hear. Now, this is really interesting because an unwholesome word, it comes from a, um, a Greek word, sapros, which means to be in a state of decay or rottenness or putrid. It was often used to describe fruit that had gone bad or food that had gone bad and was no longer edible. In fact, it became so foul and poisonous that it could actually uh, be harmful to somebody who would eat it. Well, the Amplified Translation kind of expands it in an interesting way. It says that uh, not to use words that are foul or polluting or evil uh, or worthless. And, and the idea is that uh, with our mouth we can bless and with our mouth we can curse. But in between the blessing and the cursing, there are also a lot of words that have a way of really drawing people down, pulling them down rather than lifting them up. Uh, I've found over the years that um, in conversation with people, I find the kind of language they use, the way they talk about people, situations, and things, rather than being something that you know informs and helps me to see things more clearly, they're just really kind of railing accusations. And that's an easy thing to fall into. In fact, one of the things that James warned about in, in James 4.11, he says that we shouldn't fall into slander or gossip. And again, slander is, is any uh, way of speaking about a person that's designed not to speak of what they've done or describe their character. It's you're seeking to diminish uh, them in the eyes of the person that you're talking to. And even the idea of putting this together with gossip, that we often feel like we should say things about certain people that really are not really useful or germane. The only purpose the comment makes or, or serves is to kind of get us to dislike that person or think less of them. And this is, you know, this is a, can be a very delicate thing because sometimes um, we need to inform people about things that they need to know. I mean, there are uh, certain people that <clears throat> are, are not safe. Uh, they can be very toxic. And uh, one of the things that Paul said in, in writing about people's character in the last days, I, I did a whole podcast on this when I talked about uh, the personality pa uh, pathology of people in the last days. Basically, he said people will become narcissistic sociopaths. And he said, 
avoid them, have nothing to do with them. And there are certain people who are so toxic in the way they interact with other people. Uh, there's almost a predatorial uh, aspect of their personality where um, they say and do things, uh, even sometimes flatteringly, that are really designed to entrap people in whatever uh, nefarious thing they're they're, they're wanting to do. And I think that um, when those kind of people are, are on the roam, you know, it's, it's important just to sit people down and say, you know, you need to be careful about this person because it's, they're not healthy. And, but don't overshare. Don't share more than you have to say. And don't, uh, you know, create a, a resentment or a bitterness in that person's heart. But at the same time, uh, realize that the way we say things is just as important, if not more important, than how we say. You know, it's such a, a balancing act because I know people who um, know some damaging things about a damaging person, I mean, and they will not tell anybody because they don't want to, not because they don't want to gossip or slander, it's because they don't want to be involved. They don't want to say anything that could, uh, you know, that could come back on them. And so they just stay silent. There are just some people who are unhealthy and they're, they're dangerous. And if people are being pulled into their web, then, then people need to be warned. You know, when you look at, the, at Paul's writings, he spoke out very clearly. In fact, Jesus stood up to the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he called them hypocrites, liars, snake, vipers. And I mean, extremely uh, uh, unkind terms. He wasn't doing it just to simply slander them. He was describing the predatorial nature of their, their leadership and how it was bringing destruction. But it wasn't a personal issue. Jesus loved them, but he also understood that they weren't safe. I remember how the, you know this happened to me even before I was a Christian. I remember I had, uh, when I was into the uh, alternate lifestyle of the hippieism, you know, with the drug, sex, and rock and roll, and, and I went to visit a couple of... Uh, uh, friends of mine, uh, one of them was my classmate and his, his daughter, his daughter or her, her, his sister had a real crush on me. And, and I went over and, and visited with them. And, uh, I remember after I left that, uh, his mother pulled up in her car behind me and actually pulled me over the side of the road. And then she walked up to my window and she said simply, you know, I love you and, uh, and care about you, but I don't want you around my kids. I think you're, the direction you're going is a bad direction and I just don't want you polluting them. And it was interesting because I, I, I actually respected her so much for saying that because she was right. I was, I was heading a terrible direction and anybody who wanted to travel with me would get caught up in the same messiness that I was being entangled in. And I thought that, you know, that took real courage, but she did it with such graciousness, respect. I'd never resented that. In fact, I was really impressed that she loved her kids enough to tell me, stay away from them because <laughs> you're, not, you're not good influence on their lives. And I think uh, sometimes we need to do those things. We need to sit people down and saying, I see this association, this relationship you have, and I think it's unhealthy. And I'm not a, I don't hate the other person, I'm not against them, but you need to be willing to, to say those things. And that's, uh, uh, but the problem is most of us, we hold stuff in until it explodes. And then what comes out is really, we kind of vomit up all sorts of issues and angers and resentments that we bottled up because we haven't been willing to have that conversation face to face with that person as well. So, you know, it's unwholesome words are, are words that don't build up and correction can be one of the ways in which we build up other people. Now, in Proverbs, Solomon said, you know, don't rebuke a fool because he, he'll hate you for it. Um, and that's part of the problem many times is when you try to correct a person who doesn't want to be corrected, uh, usually they'll turn around and attack you. Well, when that happens, you just know uh, the door's not open and God bless you, go in your grace and, and don't carry on the conversation. Don't get in a knockdown, drag out fight of, I know you are, but what am I? But at the same time, there has to be a point where you at least were willing to have that conversation. And sometimes when you're in adversarial dynamics with somebody, just simply ask them, are, are you willing or interested to know what I, what I feel, what I see? Um, and I think always admitting that, you know, this may be wrong, maybe I'm missing something here, but at the same time, um, I can't pretend that what's wrong isn't wrong. 
And I think that's where I see a lot of people, especially in this particular era we're in, where people become increasingly compliant and they're afraid to speak out because of negative responses. And I get that. I mean, there's a, there's a certain degree of wisdom of how we go about things and have those conversations. And frankly, most of us have become so involved in the, in the screening world that we've lost the capacity to have really direct and honest conversations with people. Um, but I've just found that a lot of times when you sit down with a person saying, let, let me tell you how, what I see. Let me just lay it out for you what I see. And uh, there are some people who just simply say, thank you for telling me that because nobody else has been willing to do it. I have to admit they are few and far between. Most people don't want to hear uh, anything that they will feel as a criticism or a fault, but we all need to hear it. And I know that I struggle with it as much as anybody else. So here again, we're trying to really kind of navigate through these issues that not having unwholesome words, one way to never speak an unwholesome word is never to say anything. And that's what some people have chosen. They give you no opinion, no response, never tell you anything. But at the same time, there are times where it's very important for us to speak the truth in love. And it means that the truth may not be something people are excited to hear, but it still needs to be done. And you'll feel better about it yourself, that I've been honest with my feelings, I've been honest with what I observed, and uh, I'm willing to be correct as well. But uh, there's some things that people say that are just rotten and putrefying, and, and they just really need not to be said. So um, I hope I didn't confuse you more than I helped you with this, but we'll continue on with the uh, next thing that he concerns us about as we go on into verse 30. Uh, God bless and go in his grace.